Welcome back to the Kyle Olson Show. Michigan has been a major focus of the Trump campaign, just as it was in 2016. The president is in Muskegon on Saturday. The vice president was in Grand Rapids on Wednesday. And Eric Trump was in Michigan on Tuesday, and he joins me now. Thank you for being here today. Yeah, you're very welcome, Kyle. It's great to be on. Michigan is once again a competitive state. Talk about the president's record of success as it relates to Michigan. Well, listen, I think, you know, my father has one of the greatest records of success um, of any president. I mean, just look what he's done across the board. I mean, I'll take the macro approach first, and then we can zoom in on Michigan for a second. But, I mean, look what he's done for our economy. Um, you know, in, in, in the uh, eight years of Obama and Biden, uh, the Dow Jones went up by 4,000 points. In the three and a half years of my father, the Dow Jones has gone up by 12,000 points. The lowest unemployment, the lowest African-American unemployment, the lowest Latino uh, unemployment. Um, the guys rebuilt the entire military. You had a military that was run out of ammo uh, that was literally uh, falling apart. Most of our aircraft couldn't get airborne. And uh, look at our military now, $721 billion a year. Um, he's put you know um, over you know $3 trillion into our military. You've got the greatest aircraft carriers being built, greatest submarines, um, the development of uh, the Space Force. Um, he's taking care of our veterans, which were horribly being taken care of. I mean, they were, the, the VA was doing a horrible job. And um, he gave them, um, you know, the right to go to, you know, private doctors, and the government would pay for all of it. Now all of a sudden the VA is fixed, and and you know the approval rating is at 95, 96 percent um, today. It's unbelievable. You see what he's done in terms of school choice and fighting against, you know, teacher unions all over the place, and um, mm -hmm. you know it's something that that parents love and care about. Look at peace in the Middle East and the two peace deals that he did, uh, you know, last week um, alone. Look what he's doing mm -hmm. on prescription drug pricing, um, you know, with most favored nations and. Prescription drug pricing is coming down. We are getting absolutely ripped off, and uh, we're no longer getting used and abused by China and, and Mexico um, and, and the rest of the world. And um, he's protected our Second Amendment, and he's protected faith in this country. I mean the Democrats have an all-out war on religion and, and, and faith in this, in this nation, and they're attacking it. I mean they took out the words under God, Kyle, right. in the Pledge of Allegiance during the, you know, the DNC. They want to take in God we trust off of our – currency they want to kneel for the national anthem and um you know um uh, they're not you know doing it anymore and um you know they're not attacking faith anymore and um you know i could listen i could go on for hours literally i could mm -hmm. go on for, for for hours um you know right to try that was a great piece of legislation that he put in that no one else could do tax cuts i mean my father put together the largest tax cuts in the history of the nation biden wants to increase people's taxes by he wants to reverse my father's tax cuts and then he wants to increase taxes by an extra sort of four trillion dollars i mean it's um it's insanity you'd see the markets collapse. You see, four hundred one k's collapse. You see, IRAs collapse, and um, so um, you know, I could I could go on and on, but you know, Michigan specific. Um, look at manufacturing. You had Obama talking about how there's no magic wand, no magic wand that'll bring manufacturing back, and they'd given up on manufacturing. And uh, Bill Clinton signed NAFTA, and NAFTA cost this country seventy thousand factories. And who was one of the biggest proponents of NAFTA was Joe Biden. And you know, look at so many of our factories are coming back to life right now. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. And a lot of that's because of the deregulation. A lot of that's because of tax cuts that could make us competitive with the rest of the world again. And a lot of that, you know, Kyle, is frankly because you finally have a president who's, you know, an advocate and a cheerleader for America. Whereas, you know, under Obama and under Biden, you have people going around the world apologizing for the greatness of America. And guess what? We're no longer apologizing anymore. So, um, listen, there's a million things, but, uh, you know, that's. Along well, with them. Right. And, and and it's not just the policy, it's the attitude. You you talked about what, what President Obama said and how those jobs aren't coming back and all of that. It's the attitude. That, to me, that's such a major difference because you've got business owners who are saying, well, if the attitude of the president is that I can do anything, that anything is possible, we're not going to have you know all of these regulations coming down on us, I'm going to take the risk. That is a major... That's a major thing that is really hard to quantify. But um, what was your reaction to the recent allegations against Hunter Biden that he received a $3.5 million wire transfer from the wife of the former mayor of Moscow and the revelations in the New York Post on Wednesday that he used his relationship with his father to improve his financial standing at Burisma? And talk about why that news is not just about Hunter Biden, but his father. Well, listen, I mean, look at look at Hunter Biden for a second. I want every American to understand. So here's, you know, here's a troubled kid. I, in fact, I feel really bad for the guy, uh, to tell you the truth. Um, and he got kicked out of Navy, um, serious drug problems, you know, all sorts of things. And then he goes over on Air Force Two to China with his father, and China gives him his fund, $1.5 billion. Now, China doesn't give money to any uh, American investment, right? I mean, they, 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 they don't give it to anyone. They give $1.5 billion 
to Hunter Biden, a kid who um, not that many years before had gotten kicked out of the Navy for substance abuse problems. I, I can tell you, you know, Kyle, they don't give $1.5 billion to, to BlackRock and, 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 the, and the biggest um, best investors on, on Wall Street. They give no money to these guys, right? But they were giving it $1.5 billion to Hunter Biden, a kid with real problems, right? They didn't mm-hmm. sit on the board of Burisma, a natural gas company in the Ukraine. Now, he doesn't speak uh, Ukrainian. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't speak the language. And, and he admits, he admits in a TV interview that he knows nothing about oil and gas. He knows nothing about the country. He doesn't speak the language, and he knows nothing about oil and gas. Why is he sitting on the board? And he's making literally hundreds of thousands of dollars per month sitting on the board, um, of a, right? And they even asked him in one of these famous interviews, "Well, if your if your father wasn't the vice president, do you think you'd be sitting on the board?" And he said, "No, I don't. I, I, I doubt it. Right. His name wasn't Hunter Biden." Then it just comes out that he took three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife and his, you know, and 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 and, and Joe Biden the entire time is going out saying, "Oh, I, I knew nothing about this." And now all of a sudden you have all these emails coming out saying. You know that, that Biden introduced him, um, that Biden knew him. There was an email from one of the guys saying, you know, it was so great, you know, meeting your father. It was so great. I mean, this is corruption at the worst level. If if I did, Kyle, if I did one one hundredth of that, if I did one one thousandth of that, I'd be in jail for the rest of my life. I mean, here's a family that profited off of the U.S. government. You have Joe Biden, who's been in government for forty seven years, ten years longer than I've been alive. I want everybody just take a minute to Google his house. Google a picture of Joe Biden's house. And tell me whether or not you think that a person who's been in government for 47 years with no other income outside of government, apparently, I mean, clearly there was, in my opinion. I mean, that's, you know, my, my, but tell me if he could afford that house. And the answer is he can't. Otherwise, everybody would be in government. Trust me, everybody would be in government. And, and guess what? The media ignores it. I mean, this came out in the New York Post. It was, it was great that they covered it. But you watch. NBC won't talk about it. ABC won't talk about it. CNN certainly won't talk about it. None of, None of these people will talk about this, and this is corruption at the highest level. Yet every single day they punch me in the face, they punch Don in the face. You know, I mean, for for what? For giving up all our businesses, for giving up everything mm-hmm. in the pursuit of, of of politics. I mean, it's um, it, it it's horrible. But the corruption in the in the Biden family is um, unlike anything that I think maybe we've ever seen in this country. I mean, it's it, it's terrible. Let's let's get away from politics, and, and this is sort of a natural extension of what we just talked about. Your family is very impressive to me. Hard work, um, dedication are two attributes that are evident. Talk about the values your father instilled in you. Yeah, well, I mean, you you, you mentioned the first one. I mean, my father had us on. You know, we weren't we're not politicians. It's not what we ever done. I mean, I knew nothing about politics when we went into this whole thing, and you know, we all spoke from the heart, but. You know we're builders, and that's what we had always done. My my father put us, you know, Don and I, and you know all of us on construction sites at an early age. I mean, I literally started on construction sites doing demo with sledgehammers at 11 years old. And mm. um, there's no one that um, you know is more competent at running wire and uh, and doing plumbing work and doing tile work and you know uh, masonry and concrete. And I mean, um, I mean, I was I was sitting there with chainsaw for summers, you know, cutting down trees, doing clearing, you know, um, you know. You know, digging ditches with with backhoes and and, and I mean, it's it's what it, I mean. We grew up on construction sites. I spent half a summer literally cutting rebar with acetylene torches, and and it was amazing. I mean, it was kind of the building blocks to who we were going into the business. I mean, you know, you'd have contractors that couldn't rip you off. You had con- you know, you knew what you were doing. But you had actually done so many of the tasks, and it really you know, and, and beyond that, Kyle, it was much more important than actually understanding kind of the skill set, which is construction for us. Um, it taught us the value of uh you know the dollar. We were working for minimum wage. Um, you know, it, it taught us what hard work was. And most importantly, we were so freaking tired by the end of the day that we didn't have time to go do bad things. Right. And you take type <laughs> A kids and you give them too much discretionary income and you give them too much time and they're going to find problems. They're, they're going to find their way <laughs> right. to, 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 to rehab or, you know, and, and I can tell you a, a lot of the, you know, a lot of acquaintances that I had, right. You know, they went down really, really bad roads. And mm-hmm. guess what? We were on a construction site at seven o'clock in the morning. And, you know, maybe we finished up at four or five o'clock in the afternoon. And guess what? We were exhausted um, and we wanted to eat and, frankly, go to bed. Um, and um, and also, you know, if you're making four bucks an hour or whatever we were making at the time, which was low, I mean, you're not going to go take that money and go buy drugs or alcohol or other things. Mm-hmm. You, you realize how hard it is to earn that money. And so, listen, we were spoiled in the fact that we always had, you know, great education and, you know, we always had a really, you know, warm roof over our head. You know, we were absolutely spoiled in, in, in that regard, but there were no handouts in our family. If we, if we wanted something, if we wanted a fishing rod, if we wanted a new bike, guess what? 
go work for it, go dig a ditch, go, you know, and so my father was incredible. I mean, he instilled hard work on us, you know, from, from day one. And now you look at us on the campaign trail. I mean, we're each doing eight, nine stops a day. I mean, I was, right. in, I was in Michigan yesterday. I was in Minnesota yesterday, crowds of hundreds and hundreds of people. And, um, you know, we're, we're workers. And I don't think there's ever been a president that's worked harder than my father. Well, and, and we're just about out of time, but I want to stay on that um, and stay on your family. If you listen to Joe Biden or Nancy Pelosi or Hillary Clinton, they say your father lacks empathy and compassion. But I've heard many stories about how your father and your family have helped ordinary people when there was really no compelling reason to do so outside of just being decent and compassionate. Where does that interest in helping people come from? My father is one, one of the greatest people in the world. He's got a heart of gold. And, you know, uh, he doesn't brag about things when he, he when he helps people. He, he just doesn't. Um, he keeps it very close to the chest. And there's a lot of people that do very little for others, but want to make a big deal out of, uh, you know, what, 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 what they, mm-hmm. what they do. He's, he's almost the exact opposite. And, you know, he ran for president. He needed this job like a hole in the head. Believe me, you know, uh, Donald Trump's life was substantially better outside of the you know, federal government. I mean, every day he wakes up, he gets punched in the head and, you know, we do as well. And he ran for government, to, you know, he ran for president to save this country. And, you know, you want to talk about empathy. You want to talk about, you know, giving back. I mean, what, what, what he's done and the amount of bloodshed, you know, blood, sweat, and tears that, that have gone into this whole process on behalf of a whole family to get back to a country that we love. I mean, my father was sick and tired of seeing, you know, America rank 30th in the world in terms of education. He was sick and tired of seeing what was happening to faith in this nation. He was sick and tired of, you know, seeing us give $150 billion, Biden give $150 billion to Iran, which chants death to America. He was sick and tired of seeing what was happening to our veterans and our military um, and our economy and our manufacturing and just in our health care and just about everything else. He was sick and tired of seeing this country used and abused. And, you know, that's why he did it. And I, I don't think there's ever been a more noble pursuit. Believe me, um, other people in his situation, they laugh at the notion of running for politics. You know, they, they like living a good life. And, uh, you know, my, my father wanted to give back to this country that he loves and um, that he loves. And um, frankly, the rest of us do as well. And um, And that's why we did this whole thing. And he has tremendous empathy and tremendous love, and he's uh, the best father in the world, and he's, uh, he's a great man. Well, and it just seems to me that this, this election, the choice could, be not more, uh, could not be more clear, where you've got a family who is trying to help others, and you've got a family who is trying to help themselves. But unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, Eric Trump, thanks so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you very much, Kyle. You take care. This is, this is The Kyle Olson Show. We'll be right back.